Let's have a look at a cross section in a latitude cyclone, as well as the weather conditions one is likely to experience at a cold front, a warm front, and at an occluded front. It is important to know the difference between what is called a plan view and a cross section. Using the mid latitude cyclone as an example, the examiner could ask you to draw a label plan view of the mature stage of a mid latitude cyclone. In this case, the examiner wants you to draw the mid latitude cyclone uh, from above or from the top. It is what you would see on a synoptic weather map. The examiner could also ask you to draw a cross section through the mature stage of a mid latitude cyclone. In this case, it is equivalent to standing on the surface of the earth and then looking at the the weather system from the side. Please remember that fronts are only there to separate cold and warm air as shown on both the plan view and the cross section. Additionally, remember that the air behind a cold front is cold and that the air behind a warm front is warm. In grade 10, you were taught about the way in which rain uh, forms, you require warm, moist air to rise. Once this air rises, it begins to cool down to what we call dew point temperature. At this point, condensation happens. In other words, all the water vapor in the air changes to liquid water. We have the formation of cloud and eventually when the cloud becomes saturated, we are going to have rain falling. Also remember that along all fronts, whether those fronts are warm fronts or cold fronts or cooler fronts, you are going to find the formation of cloud and then the formation of rain. An important aspect of rainfall to remember in terms of how hard or soft it comes down, the harder rain results from the warm air rising at a rapid speed but that rising air also cooling down very quickly. Your softer rainfall results from a slow rising of that warm air by, accompanied by a very, very slow cooling of that rising air. Let us have a look at the cross section through the mature stage of the middle latitude cyclone. And this is likely where the examiner uh, is going to ask quite a number of questions. The top here, we have the plan view and the top view, and that is looking at the weather system from above. We are going to draw a cross section through this part of the middle latitude cyclone. Let's just focus on the cross section for now. First thing to remember is that this entire system is going to move from west to east. So the whole system starts in the west and it travels eastwards. The two fronts have to be drawn. Firstly, let's start with the cold front. The cold front needs to be drawn uh, in an arch like this and the cold front has to be drawn with a very, very steep gradient. Bearing in mind that because this is the cold front, the air behind the cold front is going to be cold. In actual fact, this is the air in the cold sector. If it's in the mature stage, there needs to be a gap between these two fronts. On the side, the warm front, you're going to draw it as a straight line, but the slope or the gradient is going to be more gradual. The air in between here is warm, because that is where the warm sector is located. However, the air ahead of the warm front is also cold, because that is part of the cold sector. As the system moves from west to east, you're going to find that the cold front tends to move much faster than your warm front. The result being that this gap between the two fronts 
is going to become narrower and narrower as the cold front starts moving closer and closer uh, to the warm front. The result here is that all of the warm air in the warm sector is going to be squeezed upwards into the air. And that is the reason why we then have the formation of the cloud and then the eventual rain because that warm air has got nowhere to go but upwards. So if we come back and we focus on the cold front again, as the cold front moves eastwards, the warm air is going to start rising up that front. That warm air is going to cool down. Condensation is going to happen. Clouds are going to form and then eventually it's going to rain. The types of cloud that form at the cold front specifically are cumulonimbus cloud. You need to remember the word cumulonimbus clouds. These are uh, thunder clouds and these clouds are going to produce heavy, heavy rainfall along the cold front. In terms of the warm front, as this warm sector becomes smaller, we are going to find that some warm air is being squeezed up the warm front. Again, the air is going to cool down as it rises. It's going to reach dew point temperature. Condensation is going to occur and clouds are going to form. In this instance, the clouds that are typically found here would be nimble stratus clouds. So what we find here is that in both instances, at the cold front and at the warm front, we have the formation of cloud. Why? Because air is being, warm air is rising up the cold front, but warm air is also rising up the warm front. Both of these types of clouds will produce a rainfall with a distinct difference in that the cumulonimbus clouds will produce heavy rainfall. That the rainfall is often going to be of short duration and that the rainfall generally only falls over a small area. In comparison to the nimble stratus clouds, the rain produced here will be soft soaking rain that rainfall typically uh, lasts for much longer and it covers a larger part of the Earth's surface. The examiner is likely to ask you why there are differences in the type of rain or why there are differences in the intensity of the rainfall. The answer lies in the speed at which the warm air rises and the speed at which that warm air cools off. In the case of the cumulonimbus clouds, where the rain comes down heavily, often thunder and lightning, we need to find that this air rises up the steep front very quickly, but it also cools down quickly to produce the explosive type of weather that we are often going to find along the cold front. In the case of the Nimbostratus clouds and the warm front, we find that the air rises relatively slowly up this gentle warm front but it also cools down relatively slowly and therefore the rainfall is soft and soaking rainfall that is going to fall from the nimble stratus clouds. Please bear in mind that this is what the examiner is often interested in. We do not study geography in isolation. The idea is always to look at how these weather systems have an impact on us as humans. Please remember that if you are asked how a cold front passing over a particular area is going to impact the weather, there are a number of things you need to remember. Firstly, as the cold front passes overhead, it brings behind it cold air. That cold air is going to lower the temperature. When the temperature decreases, you're going to find that the pressure is going to increase along the cold front. We have the formation of clouds, so therefore we're going to have overcast conditions. That rain is going to come down quite heavily because all fronts produce cloud and rain. Your wind speed is going to pick up, it's going to become stronger. And very importantly, in the southern hemisphere, once that cold front passes over, 
the wind direction is going to change from northwest in the warm sector to southwest in the cold sector. Please ensure that you are able to explain how a cold front changes weather conditions at a particular place. Let's have a look at the cross section in weather conditions through uh, an occluded front. That section on the plan view represents the occluded front and we are wanting to have a look at that occluded front uh, from the side in the form of a cross section. You're going to notice that we have two cross sections. The one represents what is called a cold front occlusion and the other one represents what is called a warm front occlusion. In both cases, we are working with an occlusion and an occlusion implies that the cold front has now caught up to the warm front and it starts overtaking the warm front. In this instance, your occlusion is found over here. In the second diagram, still, the cold front is caught up to the warm front and this is where your occlusion has taken place. So what is the difference between a cold front and a warm front occlusion? If you look at the cold front occlusion, you're going to see that the cold front is the front that stays in contact with the Earth's surface. And the reason for that is because the air behind the cold front is the coldest air in this entire system. So when the coldest air is found behind the cold front, because it's cold and because it's so heavy, it anchors the cold front to the ground. So when an occlusion occurs, but the cold front remains in contact with the Earth's surface, we say that a cold front occlusion has occurred. In the second instance, where the occlusion has happened and the cold front has caught up to the warm front, but in the case of a warm front occlusion, the warm front remains in contact with the Earth. And the reason for that is that the cold air that is found ahead of the warm front is the coldest air in the entire system and therefore this cold air ahead of the warm front keeps the warm front anchored to the earth surface. So uh, a few things to bear in mind. An occlusion occurs when the cold front catches up to and starts overtaking the warm front. You're going to notice that all the warm air it's squeezed higher up into the atmosphere in both instances. If you were standing at the Earth's surface, you would only be standing in cold air. In the case of a cold front occlusion, the cold front stays in contact with the Earth because the air behind it is coldest. In the case of a warm front occlusion, the warm front stays in contact with the Earth's surface because the cold air ahead of the home front is the coldest part of the system. If you were given the plan view or the top view and you were asked to say whether we have a cold front or a home front occlusion, the examiner is likely to give you a weather station with temperature on this side and a weather station with temperature on the other side. If the temperature behind the cold front is coldest, we're going to have a cold front occlusion, but if the temperature ahead of the warm front is coldest, we are likely to have a warm front occlusion. In both cases, we're going to have cloud, we're going to have rain. This will be similar to cold front conditions, and for the warm front occlusion, it's going to be similar to warm front conditions.